As I lost consciousness high up in the clouds and the chaos dimension, I began to fall. I had a brief terrifying dream where I was jumping out of a plane with Bruca holding my hand and then I came back to reality, just in time to see the ground racing up towards me from below. My wand was tumbling through the sky a little ways away, but all I could think of was the fact that I was falling and I was going to die. The huge vine I had summoned from the jungle world was racing past me as I continued to pick up speed. It reached up to the heavens from the caverns below ground, thicker than a California redwood, reminding me of the fabled beanstalk which Jack had climbed before he fell the giant. Remembering seeing skydivers on YouTube, I put my arms out at all sides and made my body into a backwards arch, trying to slow my descent as I plummeted toward the ground. It worked, but then my wand began to drop faster than I was and I remembered I needed it back. If I was going to survive, which I planned to, I needed it to stop Bruca. The universe was doomed if I didn't disrupt her plans. Instead of slowing my descent further, I made my body into the shape of a spear and dove downwards, racing through the air towards my wand. The ground below was getting sickeningly close, coming towards me faster and faster. As I reached out my hand, attempting to grab the hilt of my trusty wand, I was beginning to suspect I'd miscalculated that I would hit the ground long before I reached the damn thing. When my fingers brushed against it, instead of grabbing it, I flicked it accidentally, sending it tumbling and spinning away through the air. I cursed in frustration. My heart jackhammered faster than I had ever thought possible, bile rising up in my throat. I made one last desperate attempt to slice through the air and move towards it. I didn't dare look at the ground knowing that it was coming at me far too fast, knowing that if I looked it would distract me just long enough to die. Instead I focused on the wand, this time grasping it tightly in my hand, not letting go. Home! I yelled as loud as I could, picturing Earth, picturing my hometown, picturing my parents. Nothing. The ground continued racing towards me, faster and faster and faster. With no time left to spare, I thought about Xavier. His stone-cold face as he watched his daughter being drowned, all so that he could teach her magic. To make her remember his lessons through trauma and pain. Xavier, I said, thinking of him bitterly. My mentor, who I had considered a father figure, or a great, 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 great grandfather figure, if you considered his age, but now I just considered him an asshole, an abusive, narcissistic piece of shit who needed to learn he couldn't treat people like that, and a second later, I was standing in front of him in his garage workshop. He was sitting at his desk looking bored, sipping on a cup of coffee. His bushy eyebrows rose up in surprise when he saw me. Ah, oh, there you are. Where have you been, boy? It's about time you showed up. I'm so bloody sick of making my own coffee, even if it is far superior to that sludge you brew. I wanted to punch him in the mouth. I wanted to scream at him. But at that moment, I was so overwhelmed with emotions to be back home and alive, I couldn't do either one. I just sat down on the floor and hyperventilated for a little while. Bathing exercises, that's good. Fantastic way to channel the multiverse. You're going a little quick, though. Try to slow down. Five seconds in, ten seconds out. Ah, it's a little better. After I caught my breath, I rose shakily to my feet. You! You! Asshole! How could you do that to your own daughter? Careful now, boy, he said, standing up and looking angry. Remember who you're talking to. He suddenly appeared ten times taller. The room darkened around us, and an ominous breeze began to blow through the previously still garage. I winced backwards involuntarily at his Gandalf-level intimidation skills. Then I steeled myself against him and continued. You drowned your own daughter. Just to get her to learn better? The wind began to settle, and light filled the room once more. Xavier shrank back down to his normal size, looking like a frail... Sad old man once again. All right. Emo magic, he said with a hint of distaste. Never get the hang of that stuff. Nasty business, going into someone else's mind, invading their memories. But if done right, well, it can heal a lot of hurt. She needs some healing after what you did to her. You and your wife, I spat. No wonder she's the way she is. He sat back down, looking defeated. I was under her spell, too. It's no excuse. I know. That woman, Bruca's mother, was far more powerful than anyone in the multiverse. I couldn't stop her. 
I couldn't resist her when she had it in her mind to teach our daughter the ways of magic. She said it was how she was taught. Her parents. Theirs before her. She said it was an ancient tradition, religion. I was ignorant to try to stop her. You should have tried harder, I said. I saw you standing there, watching it all. Watching her drown in that lake, just like... Just so she'd remember a lesson. You didn't lift a finger. Oh, you're right, he sighed. I should have done more. The multiverse is destroyed. I'll have only myself to blame. Don't you see? And among other reasons is why I'm trying so hard to stop my daughter from destroying everything because of me. Tell me something. Where did this all happen? You didn't try to fight her by yourself, did you? Now it was my turn to look sheepish. The chaos dimension, I... I followed her there. I thought she was meeting the Dark Wizard and the... Maybe I... Maybe I could... You could what? Speak up, boy. I thought maybe I could kill them both. He stared at me for a few long moments. Then he burst out laughing. Q! <laughs> kill both of them! He continued laughing for a long, long time. Ne nearly five minutes before finally wrapping up. <laughs> well, they survived at least. That's good. So, what happened? I told him how I followed Bruca through the Chaos World, how I'd gotten stranded in a desert and had drawn runes in the sand, allowing me to access the hidden chambers below ground. Well, hold, hold on a second, boy. You did what? I drew in the sand, and then it it opened up, and I fell down into the Chaos Kid's secret lair. Bruca told me that I have Chaos Magic, whatever that means. Xavier's bushy eyebrows rose up in his patented look of surprise, only this time his jaw dropped as well. Remarkable, he said after a few long seconds. Chaos enchantments are some of the more complex and misunderstood of all the multiverse magic constructs. Only a few throughout my lifespan have been able to decode them effectively. I could never fully get the hang of it myself. Now, this surprised me a lot. Xavier was the guardian of the entire universe. He protected the all-world tree from destruction, keeping the multiverse in check. He was by far the most powerful being I'd ever met, and yet he was saying that I understood not one, but two facets of magic that he could not comprehend despite his best efforts. He began to pace the room, looking deep in thought. You say you did this all by accident. What about getting into Bruca's memories? How do you figure out how to do that? I know I didn't teach you. Did I? My memory isn't what it used to be. Well, if you must know... I was knocked unconscious by an explosion. The back of my head hit a wall and, ah! I yelped in pain as he came over to paw at the back of my head. Xavier, how am I able to do this? I mean, I just have this little wand. I've barely been able to beat anyone. I get screwed over constantly by Bruca and the Dark Wizard. You're acting like I have all this power, but I don't even know what I'm doing. My mentor let out a deep sigh. Perhaps that's my fault. Your training began much too late. If I'd been doing my job, I would have found you sooner. I should have found you sooner, and then you'd be what you were always meant to be, instead of still being an apprentice. Thanks, I said, not fully comprehending his words. But then I paused and thought about it further. But what, do you, what do you mean? I could be what I was always meant to be. He opened his mouth to speak when the door crashed open with a loud bang. Smoke drifted in ominously, and then the sound of footsteps came into the hall. A moment later, Bruca stood in the doorway, her black hair blowing in that magical, non-existent breeze which Xavier had also conjured up to instill fear in me. Her eyes glowed purple with energy, and her electric stare filled the room with flickering light. The power she carried was palpable. The room was filled with a charge like the air before a thunderstorm, and I noticed Bruca's wand was even larger than before. It was now the size of Xavier's staff. A gnarled and polished rod of ebony wood nearly as tall as she was. How? I asked in terrified awe of her. How'd you get that staff? She just laughed and smiled wider than I thought possible. That last apprentice was no match for me. I'm as powerful as Xavier now, as powerful as the Dark Wizard. There's only one more obstacle left before I can take both of those powers too. 
Even Xavier was at a loss. He stood there staring at her, looking more afraid than I'd ever seen him. I challenge you. Tomorrow in the Abyss Dimension, both of you can die there in darkness and despair. Just like the rest of the multiverse. With that, she disappeared. Vanished in the blink of an eye. No portal, no spells, just... Gone. Oh dear, Xavier muttered once he had a few moments to recover. I had a bad feeling it might come to this. Come to what, Xavier? He looked at me with sorrow in his eyes and began to conjure up a gateway to another world using his staff. Step inside, boy, he said. Your world's about to change now. And I'm afraid it won't be for the better. We stepped through the portal into another world. It's a huge towering pyramid stood before us, stretching up high into the sky. It was like a mountain which had been made by men. Blocks of polished black stone, which were higher than the freight containers of transport trucks made up its bulk. How something like this could have been built, I have no idea. But then, the method occurred to me in an instant. Magic. Xavier led me to an ornate doorway, its surface covered in glowing runes and emblems with complex and intricate formations. He touched them with his hand and began to speak in a low, murmuring song. After several long minutes of a hauntingly beautiful melody, the door opened. It revealed a dark passageway with a very high ceiling leading on into blackness. Xavier snapped his fingers together, and torches lit up two by two along either side of the wall like dominoes of light leading into the tunnel. What is this place? I asked Xavier, awestruck. He sighed and began to speak, but he didn't answer my question. You've been chosen, boy. The multiverse does this every so often. Once every millennium, although it can be more frequent. Chosen for what? He stopped walking and turned to look at me. Bending down, he looked into my eyes with as much sincerity as I'd ever seen. Whatever he was about to say was important. You are the one. He let that sink in for a few moments. Then he stood up and started walking away, heading down the long passageway. What? What kind of Matrix bullshit is this, Xavier? The the one? Like, you know how played out that is, right? That's like a, a freaking plot of every single fantasy story. Like, seriously, the, the, the one? There's a reason why it's such a popular trope. The concept of the one has existed throughout every dimension, every time since the beginning of it all. The very first story ever written was a recounting of the journey of Dio Fox, a young girl who would eventually save the multiverse. She was the first one. There's been many throughout the countless millennia since her. Oh, fine. Okay, fine. So I'm the one. I'll buy it. What does that mean, though? And you still haven't answered why we're here. He led me into an open chamber, and I saw that I was in the hollow center of a great pyramid that we were in. Once we were through the doorway, the walls of the corridor disappeared, and it was only a narrow stretch of the floor leading towards the center of the massive chamber. On both sides of us, there was only blackness, and if you stepped off the edge accidentally, you'd fall forever into the darkness. I had a feeling you'd never, ever hit the bottom. Up ahead, there was a light source, glowing a faint blue color and there was a silhouette of what looked like a person inside. As we got closer, I saw that it was a woman, and she was alive. It appeared as if she was encased in ice, but it allowed her to stay conscious within it. The blue ice swirled and moved as if alive with magic. Who's that? I asked, afraid that I already knew the answer. Again, my mentor answered a different question instead, one that I forgot I'd even asked. The one who's going to be called upon to save the multiverse from destruction when the guardian of the world tree fails his duties and all other avenues have been exhausted. It must... He trailed off looking at his feet. They must what? What do I have to do, Xavier? I'll, I'll do anything. They must be one with all magic. Chaos magic, emotional magic, what I like to call classical magic, which is what I've been teaching you all along. 
how to channel the multiverse. It's classical magic that all of us learn from our earliest days. There's another form of magic, too, one that you'll need to know if you are to stop Bruca. Unfortunately, if you are truly the one, it is the only way. What kind of magic's that? Does it have anything to do with her? I asked, gesturing to the woman in the block of ice, looking at us with a growing smile. Who is she, anyway? That, Xavier said, is Bruca's mother. I'm sad to say she's not dead, like I always told her she was. She's very much alive. Why are we here, Xavier? What is this place? I asked. Knowing the answer already. This is a prison for the most dangerous woman in the history of the multiverse. And we're about to set her free. Prepare to meet your new teacher, boy. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I want to tell you thanks so much for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast if you happen to be listening to this as a podcast or as a YouTube or however else you managed to have found this story for tonight. And as always, I would love to give a big thank you to everyone who is supporting me over on Patreon. You guys are the real MVPs, you guys keep things going, especially while things have been nuts for me over the past couple of months. And things have been getting crazier and crazier as time goes on. You guys are the ones who are keeping me sane. And I mean that with all sincerity, that you guys have helped me immensely. <laughs> so, in my personal life and my professional life, I want to give a very big thank you to... Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Jacob Fenske, Chance Burnett, Diana Krause, Lakeda Canizales, Mr. Green Foster, Pettis Pleaser, Gattis, Joseph Calarudo, Woody B, Dante Kincaid, Town 803, Mephistopheles, Curse Pox Priorch, Bastion Beefcake, Jeff the Killer's Cultist, Love You M&M, M, Insanity Gamer X, Jesus Corneo, Yargul, Amber Clark, Jay Kearns, Himbo Jerry, Sam High, Crusader Chocobo, Adam Arias, Captain Scurvy, Estabine, Raiden Morris, Nate Cull, Our Min Sec Time, Angelus, Seclude, That Creepy Chick, Red Shadow Cat, Xavier and Cheyenne, Six Gay Rats in a Trench Coat, Turtle Man, Cryolinium, Lord Life's Best, Goring Tri Magazine, Mr. Marcus Blitz, Michael Inchok, Dirk Diver 030, Matt Bach, Voice of Sam, Telly J, Bacamel, The Leader Count, Melted Lake, Kelly Sue, William King, Sashi Sasaku, Stricken, Freddy Krueger, Happy Birthday, Jason Wilson, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Hades Nephew, Peter Chip, Acid System, Mog, Kiri the Sloth, Vester's Lampshade, Nico Kyle, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Paulson, and Cory Kenshin. To everyone on this list, everyone in the description, and of course anyone who could support even just one dollar, thank you all so much for making my life significantly easier with this. And if you guys would like to be able to join any of the names that you see here, or down there, or anything at all, head over to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. And with that, I wish you all a very, very pleasant night, and sweet dreams.